Hi everybody, my name is Joe Murphy and welcome to my workshop. Today we're going to be modifying a standard Nerf N Strike Elite Strife dart gun using the Worker Mod Kit to do a full auto Nerf gun. It'll be a lot of fun. Alright, so the first thing is unpacking the Strife. There's some uh, little bands that hold it in. And then there's a bunch of screws on either side, quite a few of them. Uh, you want to take those out. You'll need a jeweler screwdriver. Uh, they all come out from the will be the left side if you were holding it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and so on and so forth. Take them all out. Okay, for those of you who aren't aware of how a strife works, this cutaway will probably be helpful now that I've got it open. Basically, the user inserts a magazine into the strife and the magazine is locked in by this and there's a safety here to ensure that a magazine is inserted. They don't want uh, this functioning without the magazine in because that's uh, a risk of kids getting their fingers in there. Normally this top door would be closed which would be holding this button in and the flywheels grab it and boom and I'll demonstrate. Okay, there's your rev. So normally that's how the dart is pushed off. We're going to replace this pusher with this piece and then we're going to mount this motor up here. And the way it's going to work is this piece is going to spin. Notice that it only has gears on one side of the sprocket. So these good gears are going to come around and engage this piece push it forward, that'll push a dart off the magazine into the flywheels, and then there's going to be a part where there's no gears, and when that happens, this spring here will pull this back, allowing it to repeat. So now that you have the basics of how it works unmodified, we're going to have to start making our modifications. Surprisingly little of this stuff needs to be kept. Um, there are quite a few safeties. For example, you can't pull the trigger unless you're already revving. Uh, you can't pull the trigger unless a magazine's inserted. These are safeties to prevent children from getting their fingers up in here. You're going to have to make your where the flywheels would grab it and potentially hurt them. You can't. Uh, it won't start revving until this button is pressed too, meaning the jam clearance door has been closed. Again, we're going to dis disconnect a lot of these safeties because we're going to be modifying the gun in ways that. Uh, it makes them unnecessary. So, all right, at this point, we've got everything stripped out. That's this stuff over here. Uh, we saved again um, the hinge pin from the safety door. That would be this straight metal rod, the recoil spring for the pusher, the rev trigger and spring. This is a wiring cover for the wires running into the into the flywheels. Let me save those screws with that piece. And uh, and that's that. Now what I want to do is test and make sure the flywheels are still operational. And the way I'm going to do that is by stripping those wires and hooking them up to a power supply. Now this system is designed for use of six volts because it has four one and a half volt double A batteries. Um, and I want to supply my Let's strip these wires here. Let's see. And then I'm going to set my power supply to six volts. Let's, um, and I'm going to connect the red lead to the red lead coming off the flywheel box. And my black to the black one. And there you have a test of that, so I haven't damaged the flywheel. Now in this video, I'm going to leave the stock flywheels in it, but in a later video, I'm going to replace these stock flywheels with full auto flywheels, which are a little bit heavier and a little bit better balanced. Um, so I'm going to actually, although it's not necessary for the mod, I'm going to remove the whole flywheel rig, and I'm going to put a quick disconnect on the power to it. It'll probably end. All right, so I'm taking you in for a close-up. This is what I did. 
I took those wires and I mounted it to that little jack here, and then I hot glued the jack to that assembly. Now, you won't be doing this in your mod. Uh, in your mod, you'll just have the two wires uh, coming off of it. But for our purposes, it's gonna look the same because this is my quick disconnect, and I'll just have two wires coming off of it too, uh, one red and one black. It's just that they won't be soldered in place. Um, they'll be you know, through that quick disconnect. And this is great for me later. Again, if I wanna try and change these flywheels, I won't have to re-solder new flywheels in. I'll just put a quick disconnect on them and uh, you know, snap in the power connector. Okay, so I've reinstalled those flywheels again with the quick disconnect that I added to it right there. And I'm gonna, again, put the connector in. And now I have a, a black and a red lead coming off of it, just like if it had never been fitted with the quick disconnect. And this part, this little bit here, will be covered by the jam door when I close it. Now this one has batteries in it, so if I wanted to test the, the, the unit, I could just touch these. These are the leads from the power supply. There's uh, four double A's on the other side. So I could test it. Okay. Yeah. Now the worker kit comes with all kind of electronic components. One of the things that comes with is a set of these lever switches and they function nicely. Uh, that's the first piece we're gonna use and that's gonna be connecting power to our red system. And again, it looks like, like that. Okay, and there's three connectors on the bottom. Now, I wanna show you how we connect these in our system, okay? So here's the switch and you see it measures it and then these are my connections. So I'm gonna to connect to the center pin. I'm gonna connect power in. To the bottom pin here, I'm gonna connect power out. And then this is gonna go back to ground. And that's important later for what's called braking. Now the red switch assembly is going to go in this area here. And the first thing you wanna do is put in the button trigger assembly. And you'll see that the, it fits in there nicely and pushes like that, and then there's a spring return. Um, in, in the other one, it pushed an actual push button switch, uh, which looks like that. Here, we're gonna have it push one of those lever switches. And to do that, I'm gonna have to cut one of these projections out right here. That's the one in the middle. There's one, two, three, and there's a projection, projection in the corner. The one in the middle, you have to cut it down flush and remove that piece. Now, the next thing you're gonna do is take one of the very, very small screws that's provided with the kit and the very, very small switch and you're gonna mount it by putting one screw through, and it's gonna go right on uh, this mounting hole here. So I'm gonna screw through the switch, and again, I want the switch to be the open part of the switch up, and I'm gonna put a screw through here, this top one, and into this projection right here. With that screw and that mount, okay, so the red button, now instead of pushing that other switch, pushes this one. And again, there's a wiring diagram I provided. Okay, so that's the way I want it to be mounted. You see the open part of the switch here that mirrors this. And the three connection points uh, would be, you know, out, in, and ground. And again, that connection back to ground is for the um, braking uh, that slows the, the, the flywheels down faster by shorting them against each other. In this gun, the power actually comes from a battery pack which is on the other side. And it's these two contacts here and here. Now, I can't remember which is the positive contact and which is the negative contact. So I'm going to use my volt ohm meter. I'm going to set it. I know that there's four AA batteries in there, which should be roughly one and a half each, uh, six volts. So I'm gonna set it to the 20 volt range. Okay, so I'm reading with the red connector on the bottom contact and the 
negative or black connector, I'm reading 6.41, which I guess that's because they're alkalines. So that means that this is the positive and this is the negative. Okay, I have it right. Now, if I were to reverse them, just in case you ever get into this, what I'll get is a negative reading of the exact same amount. See, negative 6.41. So I want it to be, just so we're aware, that this top connector is the negative and the bottom connector is the positive output from the battery pack. So now that we know that this center connector here on um, the switch is the positive in from the diagram I drew there, uh, and you see that here, um, we're going to need to run a connection from the positive output of the power battery pack to the uh, center input of the switch and again so that way I know that I want to run from the positive terminal of the battery pack to the center switch and that'll be the first line we're going to run that's going to involve a little solder now if you don't know the skill already I might incorporate some of it into this uh, soldering is done with a soldering iron and solder now in some other countries it's called solder but in the United States it's called solder for this kind of work, you want to use something relatively low power. This is a Weller 30 watt soldering iron. You got this at Ace Hardware. It's heated up. I also keep a wet sponge here in case I need to wipe anything off. Some excess crud that gets on there. Uh, for solder, I'm going to use electronic solder. There's two types of solder in, or solder in different parts of the world, but in the United States we call it solder. Uh, for electronics, you want to use rosin, R-O-S-I-N core solder, not acid core solder. That's for something else, I believe, plumbing. You want to use rosin sore, rosin core solder. And again, here, this is the gun. I'm going to focus in on where we're working. Uh, and as we discussed, I'm going to run a wire from the center pin of the rocker switch up to the bottom electrical contact, which we've determined by using the volt ohm meter to be the positive output of the power pack on the other side, which is four AA batteries. So in service of that, there's some wires that come with this kit. They're awfully thick and they're hard to work with. I've cut a very short length that measures the distance pretty accurately. I don't like to have a lot of um, not so nice wires. And then I'm just gonna strip the ends of that wire. I have a pair of wire cutters, just a little bit off the end of the insulation. Now, once you have the insulation off, you can use the wire just like that, but it's always nice when you're working with solder to, so to speak, tin things. And that means get a little solder on them. Solder connects best to solder. Part of what rosin does is a glue-ish function, um, and it helps the solder stick to itself. So I'm gonna put this here. That's nice solder, and it's very, very hot. And that smoke you see, that's the rosin burning. And I'm going to get a little bit of solder on there just to increase the surface area for heat distribution. And just run a bead of, um, and there's a little bit extra on there. I'll just reheat that and knock it off. Uh, just a bead of solder on there, and it'll you get a better contact um, when you install it into your, your switch because the solder, again, sticks best to itself. Okay. Whoops. So now that I've got that tinned and ready, I probably want to tin the other end. And again, there's a little bit excess solder on there. So I'm just going to reheat that and brush it off. And then I want to do the same thing with the other end. And I'm not going to do this every time I do soldering in here, but I'm showing you the technique. Uh, again, let's see if I can get you in there a little better. Just that in the part of the end of the wire that I took the insulation off. Again, you want to get a little bit of solder going. You start seeing smoke, and you'll know you've got some melted. You've got a little surface area, and then just just get just run a thin coating of that solder onto the wire end. Okay. Now that I've got that done. Okay, here we are, and I want to run again. I'm going to turn it this way so you can see. Oh, that connection is. Um, again, this is the uh, positive terminal coming out of the battery pack, and we're going to run it into the center connector of that switch. 
again in accord with this the diagram, or in this case it would be like this. If you look down at the switch, you'll see it kind of mirrors the diagram and the way it's laid in there. You can see it. Okay. So now I'm going to make those connections. And again, I'm not going to spend this much time with every connection I solder in this project. But with this one, since it's the first one, and since some of you may not be familiar with soldering, or again, as I said, in some parts of the world called soldering, um, I'm going to just show you this. Uh, let me get the light on. So it's a good lighting. Um, and again, just so what I've done here is I've left enough here to connect to that positive output of the battery pack. I folded the wire in here nicely, and then I ran it through here. Now that excess I can cut off later. It's nice to have a little excess. And again, as usual, I'm going to start by tinning my iron, and then I'm going to run it a bead right off that surface area. Now that is, it's basically an electronics weld. It'll cool very quickly. And then I will take little snips here and cut that excess off so I don't get a short circuit across the terminals later. And that's a pretty solid connection. So the next thing you want to do is push this wire down in here nicely because I may need that space for other connections and things later. Okay. So I've got it tucked in here nicely and then I've got this right here just about where I need it to be and that's the other end. I'm going to push that onto the contact or put it near the contact so that it's right on it and then I'm going to put a little solder and I'm going to connect it to the positive end and then I'll have that first line of positive flow from the battery pack into uh, the switch that runs the rev motors. Okay, tin the, tin the tip. Oops. Okay, so now I should be able to connect this black wire going to the rev to the negative pole of the battery pack. And the other wire to the bottom on the switch, which should be the out. And when I pull that trigger with those connections made, I should get rev. You should be able to hear it. Let me get these wires in where I want them. Okay. So, okay, I finished it. I ran a, from the bottom terminal of this, I ran a wire. Um, I connected to the red coming out of this, and I ran it nicely through that channel, down along here, and tucked it in. So there's plenty of space and I don't want wires to conflict with each other. And that's the out. If you remember our diagram, uh, this one, the bottom is out and the top is in. So we go from the positive terminal of the battery pack to the in on the switch and then from the um, bottom terminal, which is out on this diagram, through this wire up into the flywheels, okay? And then the negative line, the black line coming out of the flywheel, went right and soldered directly to the negative terminal of the battery. So now, if I, <coughs> I push this button here, I'll fight the spring, I'll turn the switch, and the flywheels will start to run. Getting back to our circuit, if you remember my diagram, uh, I wanted to run this back to ground, the top connection of the, uh, the trigger switch. I want to run that back to ground here. And then the question is why? I'm going to demonstrate that here uh, with a test lead. Okay. So if I rev it up, it takes quite a long time to spool down. If I run that one last wire, and I'm just going to use this as a temporary connection. When I take the switch off, it offers braking, and it does that by 
in a sense, shorting the motors against each other. They wind down against each other. So I'm gonna make that a hard connection so we have the braking. All right, now we're gonna get into what may be one of the harder parts of this job, but I'm gonna show you how to make it easy with some tricks. But what you have here is the pusher assembly. And the way this works, the, this motor pack will be oriented in It'll be oriented about here in the gun, and it will be spinning. Uh, you want it to spin clockwise, and it, what it'll do is the teeth on it, and again, there's only teeth on half of that gear. It looks a little bit like the head of a rooster. Um, when they engage this pusher rod, which has similar teeth on top of it, push it or push a dart into the gear, into the flywheels. And then when there's no teeth left on here, when you're on the smooth part of it, the part that has no teeth, <coughs> there'll be nothing in the way and the spring will pull this back. And, and then of course, that's how it reciprocates and does the, the fire. The first thing I wanna do is again, you wanna check the polarity on this motor which way is which to get it to spin um, clockwise. I've got my power supply here. This is a six volt system in the gun. I don't necessarily need to know how fast it spins at full speed. And what I want to do here is I'm just going to connect my negative lead from the, negative lead from the power supply to the negative lead on the motor. Let's just touch them. So, you know, if you can see that it's spinning counterclockwise. So what we want is the other way around to get it to spin in the direction we want. So I'm going to put the negative on the bottom pin. Okay, and that's the direction we want it to spin in. Clockwise. So now we know that the positive is on top and the negative is on bottom. Now, interestingly, that's the opposite of the way the battery pack was laid out, but that's what we're going to have to do here. Now, you can't just put this motor in the gun, it won't fit. Or it won't fit, it'll fit, it'll lay there. Let me back out here. Go with the power supply. It'll lay there, but it can move back and forth and slide around. And you need a way to mount it, and it needs to be mounted precisely. If it's too far forward or too far backward, uh, it won't engage the, the um, pusher bar with proper synchronization. So in order to do that, that's one of the really cool things about this worker kit. They provide a mounting system, and that's it there that allows you to get this in exactly the right spot. Now the mounting system comes in a plastic bag. Most of it you don't need, but it consists of this piece, very important. I don't even know what this does because I've made this kit so many times without it. And the way it goes, the motor has a little projection in the bottom. That's the part of the shaft of the gear. And if you look here, on the mounting system, there's a cutout for that to go. So you put the motor on it, and that little pin fits right in that square hole, and it goes nicely. And then right here, there's a mounting hole on the mount and a lug there. So you snap them together, and you take one of these screws. It's mounted to its own mounting bracket. All right, I had a little difficulty with that in the demonstration. Let me show you. If you look inside here, uh, you can see its various notches. There you go, in here. And those fit conveniently into these notches and things on the bottom of the 
the bracket. So when it goes in, it really does go in nicely. Um, and I know we're going to demonstrate that right now. All right, so I'll try and get it in now. And again, you want to line up that notch on the bottom with the little matching pieces on the bottom here. And you kind of have to get it in there with a little click in. Feel it lock in when it's in. Uh, that's about right. It's locked in there nicely. Next thing I'll do is I'm going to test to see if it's synced up. So I'm going to remove this. I'm going to turn the teeth up. I'm going to put the pusher in where it belongs. This works right now the teeth on the spark and the engine are up so this can freely move back and forth until the gears come around and when they do they engage this and pull it forward thusly and once it clears the motor keeps going and the pusher is under spring tension is pulled back to here like that. all right so for me with some trial and error i got it to a place where i think i'm about right if i turn this show you. the gears will engage i don't know they're missing but if i get it in there it'll go through and if i let it go it'll come back now again, I'm going to have to work with that, but before I do that, what I don't want to do is get it timed out just right and then have to take the motor back out the solder connection. So I'm going to take it all apart now and I'm going to have leads off the motor. Um, all right, so after some not insignificant tinkering, uh, I, I put some test leads onto the motor, observing that when it's installed properly, positives on top and negatives on the bottom. To spin this counter or spin this clockwise. I've got the spring and the pusher in, and if I'm and I've just fiddled with it, I've got it mounted nicely down in there uh, in a way that looks like the notches match up that I showed you in the earlier recording. To test this, I'm going to uh, connect the hot to our trusty power supply. I'm going to take that down a little bit just so it's not going to be too bolsters. Let's see if this works now. What I want to do, I want to turn the power supply off first. And I'm going to hold this just so, because it, there's nothing holding it in there other than um, just placement. And this should work. Let's see. to tighten this down a little bit. You saw it jump at that one point. But you, and that's just tinkering. If you want a little tip from me, it appears that the thing that got it is just getting it matching up those notches exactly right. And I want to just demonstrate that again. Once you got that going, then you're in a really good spot. heat up the hot glue gun while I've got this where it is and I'm going to um, glue these pieces particularly uh, the motor mount I'm going to run Let me show you. okay so the hot, heat, uh, the, the hot glue guns heated up um, before I glue it I want to just make sure I've got it seated exactly where I want it one last time so what I'm going to do here just test it by giving it some power. So now I've got it seated exactly where I want it. I'm not going to fool with anything else. What I'm going to do here, um, 
you look, uh, there's a space in here. And I'm going to fill that with hot glue to hold it there. Just this is a very delicate part of the operation. So even having just taken that little break with you, I'm going to test it again. Again, I'm going to use my finger to hold it in place. I'm going to be done with the hot glue later. Now that would be an unhappy day for a kid or you if you were out trying to do more for it. Let's just get it just right. Okay, so I'm going to glue that, that. Now I'm going to glue it up. So this is a uh, Stanley hot glue gun, just regular glue sticks. And I'm going to run a nice bead of glue right in alongside the motor mount. Get a good amount in there because this is going to be what holds your motor in place. Be careful that you don't get glue in the motor itself because then it will rotate. And also be careful that um, you don't get glue in any of the screw holes. You know, because you need them to put the gun back there later. And then you'll just hold it, and it's going to take a long time for the glue to cool. So I'm not going to wait you wait on camera for that, but I'll show you what I'm done. Okay, so that glue has dried or cooled, if you would. Uh, I actually, after it cooled, tested it. It was good, and then I added some more. You, you want to have plenty in there because you don't want it to break down on you. And let's run a test here. Okay, so it appears to be working. Exactly, it's supposed to be. Now we'll be pushing darts off the top of the magazine, which goes in here, and into the flywheel in here. So, the next thing we want to do is a little more wiring. Now, obviously, it's not just going to be on all the time, it's supposed to be on when uh, the trigger is pulled. Now, the trigger is this piece here. There's a fancy so to speak, sport trigger that comes with the worker set. You can use either one. It really, I don't think it makes much of a difference. I think uh, these dots on the, um, the stock one, if you can see the holes in it, uh, this helps kids identify which ones have been modded and will go full auto because this does not have those. And, and sometimes that's uh, of interest to the kid. I, I don't care and I'm not gonna bother with it today. But the way this works, this trigger system lays in here and goes back and forth in this little groove and then this screw holds it in place here all right now again we're going to be we have replaced all of the mechanics up here with this fully automatic system so much like the rev is no is well, the, the rev was always switched, but uh, before we did it, this was a mechanical interchange to fire one. We're going to wire it now to be to actually actuate another switch, a very similar to the switch we used for uh, the rev. And I'm going to start getting that ready, and I'll talk to you a little bit about that more when I'm getting going with that. Okay, now ultimately we're going to end up taking the pusher bar back and spring back off to run wiring, and also we're going to not install the. Uh, we're gonna to have to run wires under here and things to do this. But the way this will ultimately work is the trigger assembly will sit here and it's really nice because this fits almost perfectly right there. That's the, uh, the trigger switch assembly. If you just tuck it right in here and then you'll, you'll hot glue it later and then you have that and that will be turning on the feed. So first, the operator will rev up the flywheel, and once they get it speedy, by pulling this trigger, it'll start feeding darts into the uh, flywheels and then out, out the, uh, the muzzle. Nicely enough, the wiring for this isn't gonna be all that big of a deal, at least for now. So how this is gonna work is I'm gonna run the positive wire um, to one of the terminals, either the center or the bottom of this switch. And then the other one, I'll probably will we'll run to the, uh, 
positive terminal of the battery pack, which again is uh, this one here. So remember the bottom two are connected in and out. It doesn't matter which is which because they're connected when the switch is depressed. But uh, so, and the, what that means is that power is gonna come out of positive into the in, which is the center pin of this rocker switch. Out of this rocker switch, through this red wire to the motor, and then the negative lead off the motor, I'll just connect directly to, um, again, this is the, let's see if I get you a better view. So there's two. This is the positive terminal from the battery pack, and this is the negative terminal from the battery. This doesn't need braking. Uh, it wouldn't actually do braking because it doesn't have dual motors that would go out of sync with each other if they were shorted. But, uh, so that's where I'm going now. I'm going to see if I can solder those connections. In the process, obviously, these leads that I put here, they're way too long. It's always better to have a little more than you need than not enough. And I'm going to measure them to be neat. Um, if you remember earlier, I discussed the fact that that pusher rod comes through here. So you don't want these wires in the way. And you handle that by tucking them down in as I did with this wire. You tuck them in and you run them through that channel we cut, which will ultimately be under um, the trigger assembly for this system. So I'm going to get that going now and I'll show you what I'm done. All right, now we're getting someplace. So sync the motor and I've installed the two switches. The bottom switch again revs up the flywheel system here. And the top one which would be the trigger in a regular case, turns that. Now, this is just laid in there, so I'm going to remove um, the trigger assembly here. And I'm going to put a little hot glue just in here to hold that switch in place, because it's just put in there. Um, you know, just, it just lays in there nicely, but a little glue, it'll be a solid mat, and it won't be going anywhere. just so that it doesn't rotate out of position. Another thing I've noticed with this worker kit, at least if you do it the way I did, uh, and I don't know, let me see if I can get you in there close up. If you can see it, and I don't know if you can here, that the, the, the end of the button doesn't exactly connect this exactly. And what I've done is a little workaround. So I've taken a piece of cardboard and just laid it in there. So you can use a pack of matches or whatever. And I cut it just to fit in between there and make sure that it'll, it'll always, the button and the switch, and then you'll always be in good contact uh, as, it, as it works. Now, again, what we're waiting for now is for the glue up here on the switch that turns the, the motor to dry or, or cool. And I'll be back when that's done. All right, so now I've got the nominal trigger back in, and we'll test that. Now you may notice it's going much faster now than it did when I tested it. That's because it's getting the full six volts uh, of the uh, battery pack instead of the three or four I was using for testing purposes. Um, in, in other models, I use voltage regulators and things to slow down the feed. We may have to do that later with this one, but uh, this is pretty much a a basic modification. Looks like all that's left, you want to make sure that these wires here aren't in the way of the pusher rod. Right? So you tuck them down in there nicely. You might want to, you could even give them a dot of glue to hold them in place if you wanted to. Um, I don't know how necessary that is. And uh, now I'm going to close it up. Okay, so we're done. And here's the finished product. Pretty much a standard looking Nerf gun. The only way you might notice is that extra connector in there. I've got a full magazine of some darts. Let's see how it works.
There you go.